Hello everyone. Welcome back for for this week's video. All right, we uh, left off last week with Daniel chapter 5 and we're going to continue this week. So, uh, this week we're going to talk about Daniel chapter 7. So as a quick recap, in Daniel chapter 5, it was Belteshazzar was the king of Babylon, son of Nebuchadnezzar. And he had a party and he drank wine and him and his guests out of the vessels that were taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And because of that, his kingdom ended. And at the end of Daniel chapter 5, it says, And Darius the Mede captured Babylon. Now, the history of that time of the Median Empire is very lacking. Uh, there's not much information available about it. It probably um, is because that uh, the area that it's in is in Iran. And um, I imagine there's not a lot of archaeology going on there. And, um, you know, and they, they, they don't, they would rather control the narrative. So we're not going to get the kind of our archaeology out of Iran that we that have we have gotten from Iraq and other places and um, that might be why we don't have a lot on the Medes and as far as the Persian history there are three or four sources that all kind of disagree with each other and it's a little bit muddy also that history and so um, you know, the history that you might read about those times is not necessarily um, been hashed out. So there's a few tablets and a few records that are found. One is a Babylonian record, which, um, you know, it doesn't line up with the other histories. Um, so they, they accept that record, but who knows? Who knows if it's actually true? It, it was very common in those times that any king who conquered another king, it, or if there was a war, both losers would claim victory. And no king would ever concede or say, I lost, and make a monument to his loss. So... It's kind of, uh, there was a lot of propaganda going on at that time even. So we just don't really know for sure. But uh, we can trust Daniel to say uh, what he says. Um, now, what might have happened is, is the Medes may have taken Babylon, and then the Persians took it from the Medes. That could have happened. Because the Medes and the Persians... They kind of worked together, but then the Persians ended up taking over. But the royal family of the Medes, which Darius was from, um, I guess Cyrus and they were from different families, but there's a history there about how Darius came to, ta came to take the kingdom after Cyrus because his son was killed, and there's a bit of a story behind that also. So, you know, re you can read these histories like Herodotus. It's uh, one of the oldest histories available. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot in there that may or may not be true. And w the, the best thing is if you find more, more archaeology and more evidence... And you compare other kingdoms around them with what they say and what this kingdom says, then it starts to become more clear from an archaeological record. But for Persia and Media, it's just not that clear yet. So we'll just go with what Daniel says.
You'll see here he, it starts off, it pleased Darius. So Darius had taken over the kingdom of Babylon. So then it goes into Darius being the king. And it goes in about uh, Daniel in the lion's den in chapter 6. And then in chapter 7, now this is the chapter we're going to look at because it says in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. So now we're going back in time, you see. If you look at the book of Daniel, you'll see that the first six chapters of it is history and Daniel is working for the kings right chapter one he uh, is a kid and he gets uh, put into the the uh, school by Nebuchadnezzar chapter two is the dream of Nebuchadnezzar Daniel interprets a dream for the king of Babylon chapter three Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold and the fiery furnace, how he answered to that dream that he had by trying to change it. Chapter 4, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, becoming a beast and walking like a beast for seven years and learning that God sets up kings and God is more powerful than he is. Chapter 5, Belshazzar makes the great feast and drinks out of the Lord's vessels and loses his kingdom. Chapter 6, Darius is the king. And the, the other wise men are, um, conspire against Daniel and get him thrown in the lion's den. And Daniel survives it. So this is all, if you'll notice, this is the history of the kings in Babylon and Daniel is is the one of the the leading wise men but if you start in chapter 7 it begins with Daniel had a dream these are dreams given to Daniel they're not given to a king of Babylon so when the dream is given to a king of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar then that vision is for Babylon and for that area. That's why we interpreted the uh, statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream as leading to the Parthian kingdom. It has nothing to do with Rome or anything else. It's a dream. It's a, it's a prophecy about Babylon. But now Daniel had a dream and his visions of his head upon his bed and he wrote the dream. So this is a dream for Daniel and this is during the Babylonian king. So this, this is the next, uh, the first dream of Daniel for his personal use. Okay. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Now what is the great sea? If you look in uh, like in here Joshua chapter 1 when they're defining the borders from the wilderness and Lebanon even to the great river that would be the, the Euphrates is always called the great river the river Euphrates, you ever hear they name it, but sometimes they don't name it, they just say the great river, it usually refers to the Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast, while towards the west, which is the Mediterranean Sea, okay? We look at uh, Numbers chapter 34, as for the western border, you shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your western border. This is for the children of Israel. So that's the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Joshua 15. Ashdod with her towns and villages. Gaza with her towns and villages. Unto the river of Egypt 
and the great sea and the border thereof. Talking about the Mediterranean Sea. Ezekiel chapter 47. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engadi unto En Egalam. They shall there they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. And this is obviously again talking about the Mediterranean Sea. So, in other words, everywhere in the Bible when it talks about the Great Sea, it's talking about the Mediterranean Sea. So, this is not like Nebuchadnezzar's dream that is centered in Babylon. This dream is about the, the, the four winds strove upon the Mediterranean Sea. This is the powers striving on the Mediterranean Sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So there's four beasts, four different beasts. So now, first of all, there's an interpretation at the end of the cha chapter. Daniel has this dream. Okay, and then in, uh, verse 15, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of things. So we're going to bounce back and forth at the interpretation as we go through. Uh, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings or kingdoms, which shall arise out of the earth, okay, related to the great sea, the Mediterranean Sea. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. So he doesn't even talk about the first three beasts. He goes straight to describing the fourth beast. Okay, but what's important to look at here is he said, These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Which shall arise. So this is not including Babylon, is it? Because shall arise means it's going to happen. So it starts with the kingdom after Babylon. And this is upon the Mediterranean Sea. So the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up. Now this is the Hebrew word behemoth. Which sometimes is translated as cows. Um, it just means a large animal. But in prophecy, uh, God refers to uh, kingdoms as beasts. It's like a beast of burden for God. It's God's cow that he's using to direct the affairs of men. So there's this kingdom with a king over it, striving with another kingdom. And God is directing the affairs of men by influencing these kingdoms. So they're God's beasts of burden is what they are really. But some of them can be quite fearsome. So, but, but none of them are fearsome to God. God is directing the affairs of men through these beasts. Okay. So the first was like a lion and it had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now most people will jump at this right away and say, well, that's Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Because Nebuchadnezzar, if we, when we read in chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream uh, that he was a tree and the tree was cut down. 
and he became like a beast until he acknowledged that God is in charge of the kings of men, and then he was lifted up and given his kingdom back. But this doesn't necessarily have to be talking about Babylon. Okay, so Babylon, the symbols of that the gates of Babylon were lions with wings. Okay, it was like a lion. Doesn't say it was a lion that had wings. It was like a lion and it had wings, but the wings were plucked off. So this could be Persia because four great beasts came up from the sea. So this is not talking about the Western Mediterranean, I don't think, because these are four great beasts. So it's great beasts uh, related to Daniel's and related to Daniel's people. So it would be um, it would be related to the Western Mediterranean because this is the great empires of the world in in ancient history. So it's obviously related to that. This here is the Red Sea. This is where Egypt was, Lower Egypt. This here is uh, where Israel is. Over right in this area, this is where Babylon is. This here is all uh, um, Persia, uh, where Persia began, which is Iran today. Iran, Afghanistan. So this is the, the first great beast that uh, See, it takes over a great part of the Mediterranean Empire. The Persian Empire, you know, in the history we know it threatened Greece. This is Greece here, right? And it took all of this and it even went in, across the Hellespont, down into here, and and even into northern Greece. It, it, and even up into here, the... They, went there they must have had a naval system on the black sea so so anyway you can see the extent of it quite large so now it being uh, having the wings plucked now here's Darius's um, sculpture in the side of a mountain that he left in Iran that talks about his kingdom so here's a, a, a depiction of Darius wor worshipping Mazda. You see, so it's, it, if you look at this, it's very similar to the Babylonian um, god, the sun god, I can't remember the name of it. It was like a, a sun with wings, but now it's like a man with wings. So it could be talking about that, or it could be talking about where it started out as as uh, absorbing the the religion of the Babylonians, but it just kind of left that behind and and the um, started to um, adopt the Babylonians began to adopt this Zoroastrian religion. That looks like an altar there. That's Mazda. This is probably Darius and all his kingdom. So after it had its eagle's wings plucked, it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given it. So this is the Persian kingdom. Um... Now, what this kind of reminds me of, this reminds me of Isaiah. If you look at Isaiah chapter 44, that says to Cyrus, that's the king of Persia, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple your foundation shall be laid. And also in uh, Isaiah chapter 45, Thus says the Lord, Yahweh, to his anointed, 
to Cyrus, king of Persia, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which call you by your name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel my elect, I have even called you by name. I have surnamed you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no else. There is no God besides me. I girded you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no one else. So, this here, this, as the story goes, Daniel was in Babylon. And when the King Cyrus took over Babylon, Daniel witnessed to Cyrus. Now this Isaiah, this was written oh, about um, 200 years or so before their time. And Daniel says, you know what? There's a prophecy about you. And he would have read this. And to say, this is, I will do all these things for you so you know that I am God. So it's no stretch to think that this, uh, a man's heart given to it, could be talking about Cyrus. Cyrus the Great of Persia. Okay, so there's so far so good. Uh, before we go any further, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell if you'd like to receive notifications of when I make another video. And the subscribing really helps my channel to go up in the algorithms and uh, gets the word out more. And if you like, it helps this video go up. So uh, take a few seconds and just hit the subscribe button and the like button. And I thank you so far for all the subscribers I have now. And so let's continue. Okay, so after the lion, there was another beast, a, like a bear. A second beast, like a bear. And it raised itself up on one side and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said to it, Arise, devour much flesh. Okay, now devour much flesh for a beast that is a kingdom would be devour much power attain more land, take over more. And this can't be said about anyone more in history than Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was just a young man. He's in his 20s when he went to war. And this is the extent of his empire when he died. He had conquered all of this. If we remember, the Persia, uh, Persians had taken the, all of this and they had gone up into here and taken all of this up in this area here and they were threatening Greece. Now Alexander, when it says that uh, he had three ribs in his mouth and he rose up on one side. Now we know the Greece was uh, sort of a dual kingdom. There was the Macedonians and the Spartans, the Athenians and the Thracians. But there's basically four kingdoms here that kind of uh, each vied for power. But Macedonia 
was where Alexander was from. He was the king of Macedonia. Now, f before he moved in to take over Persia, he had to take over the other three parts of Greece. He, 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 he dominated over the Thracians, the Athenians, and the Spartans. And, well, it doesn't look like he got the Spartans, but he, he dominated Greece first. So that's the three ribs in his mouth, I would say. And raising up like a bear, then he went over here and he took, he just went like a rocket into here. He took Egypt away from Persia. And then once he got that, he had like just huge armies. And they came in here and he just wiped right through here. He took over all of Persia. And then he died. So that could be the bear, devour much flesh. I mean, that can't be said about anyone more than Alexander the Great for one person or one king. So we go into the next beast. Be down in uh, chapter 6 or verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another beast, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings, and a beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. This, this is probably talking about the Diadoshi. And what they are is when Alexander died, he left no son and no children. He was so young. And he spent his whole life, it just, he just loved war and battle and conquering. So he never actually had a family. So his generals had a meeting and they divided his kingdom up. And, and this kind of equates to what they say the four parts. This is uh, Egypt under Ptolemy. This is the beginning of Ptolemaic Egypt. This is uh, the Seleucid Empire right here. And then this is the Lysantius, I think his name was, Lysantius, and Cassandre. These are the four main divisions of Alexander's empire. So that's traditionally what um, Christians will determine as that the four-winged beast is. And it had the four wings to it. And it was actually an Alexander's, the... the Remainder of Alexander's empire. And then out of this, um, between here and here, they were fighting over Jerusalem. You can see there's the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. They were always at battle here. Um, and that bore out into the Maccabean revolt, which began the Jewish empire. But the Jewish Empire, it got fairly big, about this big. But that does not equate to one of these four winds striving over the, the Great Sea. You see, this here, this is striving over the Great Sea. Uh, and as far as the Jews knew, the Great Sea... This was probably about all they knew about was this area here. So that's the Daniel's vision is talking about the, f the great empires striving over the great sea. So this would be the third empire. And, and, it, and you also notice here with the, the Deodishi that it had four heads and four wings. So this is the four kingdoms of Alexander's. And it says, and dominion was given to it. It didn't take this stuff. It was just given to it. Just dropped right in their laps. So that makes sense too. Now the next beast, after this, I saw in the night visions. And behold, a fourth beast. Dreadful. And terrible. This is. And strong. Very strong. 
and it had great iron teeth. This is a kingdom of iron. And it devoured and broke into pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it. So what is the next empire to take over after the Diodishi? Diodoshi, after the Diodoshi. Well, that's easy. The Roman Empire. And this is taking over the whole great sea. This, this, this is different from all other kingdoms. Because it started off as a kingdom, but then it became a republic with a senate. So it was different from all the other kingdoms. And it became exceedingly strong. And nobody could take over. Nobody could conquer Rome. It was, uh, it went on for, what, uh, 500 years, 450 years, something like that. So it took over Egypt, it took over Syria, uh, the Holy Land, took over all of this, all of this, took over Greece, took over France, uh, England, Spain, all North Africa. This is all Roman. So this, you know, it really does describe Rome quite a, quite a lot. It's diverse from all the other kingdoms. And it had ten horns. We can talk about that later. But see, Rome, they had ten days in a week. Uh, ten was a, a quite a, a a popular number for Rome. Now, as far as the t ten horns and the three horns being plucked up by the little horn, when Rome became Christian, about 325 AD, after that it, it had a pope and the bishop of Rome and the emperor was a Christian. And over here on the, the western part of the empire, they had a little bit different type of Christianity than the eastern part of the empire. These guys here were Trinitarian. They, they believed in the Trinity. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all are one. These guys had a slightly different take on it. I think they saw Jesus as a subordinate to the Father. The Father and I are one, but they, they had a different view of that. And so they, the two parts of the empire, the empire was divided over this. And there were ten provinces all together. Three of them fell, and the other two became Trinitarians. So that's sort of what this... Ten horns and three being plucked up by the little horn, who is the bishop of Rome. Uh, that's what that is talking about. Um, but I'll leave you to look into that yourself. Or maybe I'll make a video about it later. But it's quite a long discussion. So that's what sort of the fulfillment of that. And I considered the horns. And behold... There came up among them another little horn, before whom three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man. So this is like he can see. This is a, like, like he can see like God, right? The eyes of a man. He's not a God. He's a man. And a mouth speaking great things. And I beheld till thrones were cast down. And the ancients of days sat. Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like pure wool. And his throne was like a fiery flame. And his wheels as a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered to him. 
and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set. So right up until judgment day, this kingdom and this 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 kingdom that kind of had a kingdom, but it plucked out three three kings and this little and it became this little horn with eyes in it speaking great things like great blasphemies okay and right up until judgment day and be and i beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke so that horn was speaking great words and I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So now this season, this is talking about the holy days. This is the appointed times of the holy days. Um, like we talked about in a video before, we have the Passover, the Feast of Weeks, the Day of Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, and the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Booths. This is the appointed times. So they were, and these appointed times also are attached to prophetic events. Like the, the, the Passover is attached to the crucifixion of Christ. The Pentecost was attached to the apostles receiving the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Um, and the Feast of Trumpets is... Um, the trumpet is announcing the coming of the atonement. And the atonement is the judgment day. It's the day when the high priest goes into the most holy and anoints the most holy and all the sins are forgiven of the people. So that's the um, judgment day. So the, the trumpets, it's like the trumpets in Revelation. You have the seven trumpets that bring the seven plagues. And the trumpets are like announcing judgment is coming judgment is coming and then the plagues are the judgment so um the 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 lives of the other beasts you got babylon um persia and the diadochi uh all of these cultures are a part of our culture and even Roman culture, it's a huge part of our culture. Um, our law is, British law is based upon Roman law. And American law is based upon British law. Canadian law is based upon British law. Um, most of Europe, uh, their l legal systems are based upon Roman law. So... Rome is, is, you know, we still celebrate Christmas and New Year's. A lot of these cultures come from straight out of Rome. Um, R Rome didn't invent them, but it's like our common denominator for uh, half of the world, uh, the Western world, basically. And even uh, Russia uh, would be the Byzantine uh, culture. A lot of their uh, East, the Eastern Orthodox, is Byzantine culture, and that is also Roman. So, yeah, yeah, Roman culture is still quite alive and well today. Okay, and then it said, and I saw in the night visions, and lo and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. This is the second coming of Christ. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, 
And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And it's just like the stone that hit the image of the feet in in, uh, Babylon. So he's claiming it over, over the east and over the west. See, in the east, it's the stone that hit the image. And in the west, it's the Son of Man coming in the clouds. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, and the visions troubled me. I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth, and he told me the interpretation. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. So that's the good news, is that it ends up with the saints of the Most High getting the kingdom forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, and it was exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were iron and his nails of brass, and he devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. So Rome, when they took over Egypt and Babylon and all these other kingdoms, well, they didn't take over Babylon, but they took um, from uh, Pergamum. They they took over the Babylon culture through Pergamum. Um, they just absorbed all these other religions. And... You'll find the the Greek gods and Roman gods are much the same, and the Egyptian gods, the Romans absorbed that, and then they just smashed down to pieces whatever they didn't absorb. They stamped the residue with its feet. And of the ten horns that were in its head and the other which came up, beho- before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, who look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld in the same horn, the same horn made war with the saints. So this is a the one king out of Rome. This one horn, with its speaking great things, made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Now. As a Protestant, I can say the only one that I know, the only kingdom I know that made war with the saints and prevailed against them would be the papacy. The horn with eyes. To me, it it looks like the papacy. Made war with the saints, boiled them in oil, burned them at the stake, and it prevailed until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Now, people say, well, America. Well, America was like a pause, and it's kind of, it's the beast in Revelation that came up looking like a lamb but started to speak like a dragon. It, 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 It was a temporary win. Um, this this beast is everywhere. It it takes over everything. So only God is going to defeat this thing. And he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth, which will be different from all kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth, one world government. And it shall tread it down and break it in pieces, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be different from the other ones, because the papacy is different than the emperors, right? And he shall subdue three kings. That's a bit more detailed history. We can talk about that some other time. And he shall speak great words against the Most High that I am the vicar of Christ, and I sit in my golden throne, and I tell the whole world what to do. 
and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Yeah, we got a mother goddess, Mary, now, and we got saints, and we got candles, and we do all this stuff. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. Uh, we have more authority than the Bible, right? He, he speaks great words against the Most High, and he wears out the saints. And to think to change times and laws. Okay, well, let's change uh, sa the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Change the, t the appointed times. This is the holidays, the holy days of God. We don't celebrate Passover. We, uh, they, don't, they don't have Passover. They have Easter. They don't have Pentecost. They have Palm Sunday. They don't have Sabbath. They have Sunday. Sabbath means seventh seventh day it doesn't mean sunday 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 is the the romans day to worship the sun sabbath is god's uh day which is saturday the jewish sabbath he will think to change laws right uh there's no uh commandment against worshiping images is there nope And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and half a time. And this, this time frame, time and times and half a time, that appears uh, over and over in prophecy. This is a very prominent time frame. We have to do a whole different video on that, just that alone. But that's the, the span where this thing has power. They shall be given into his hand for this period, right? And judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion. This is the Babylon the Great shall fall to consume and destroy it unto the end. Well, maybe it's a long, slow fall. Maybe that's happening right now. It's losing more and more power until it's uh, one day it just goes pop. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. That's like the real Christian people that actually follow the word of God and listen to Jesus. Only Jesus whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. That's Jesus. The Father and I are one, so him is God, is Jesus. Here, too, is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Because he didn't know what all this was about it just freaked them right out but uh, it was pretty accurate okay that concludes our video for today thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe please if you're not subscribed already um, I'd like to try to get up there and get this thing rolling and once it gets past a thousand then it starts to take off